Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Seasons of Motherhood. I'm excited to introduce you to Trifina today. We have another fantastic episode. I'm so excited to share with you her journey and her life. Um, I believe we met, I actually can't remember the first time we met, but it would have been through See Here Love. It and was. knowing Melinda, being the connector she is, she's yep. just automatic connector. Um, that's how she brought our two worlds together. And so it has been an honor and a blessing to watch you to teach and be involved and see her love. And I've just learned so much from you, uh, just kind of sitting back in, in the audience and, and learning. So thank you for what you are doing through See Her Love and what God is gifting you with. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's wonderful. So let me introduce you just a little bit so people yeah. have an understanding of who you are. <laughs> and then you can fill in the gaps for sure. um, after that. So we have Trifina here. She's grown up as a second generation uh, immigrant into Toronto. And mm -hmm. you were surrounded by good food and people from every walk of life. So mm -hmm. I'm surprised that people are feeling known and loved and where you are today, because that's just what you do. You exude warmth with everybody. Um, your life has changed a lot over the years as you studied sociology and education, taught elementary school, very similar to what I did, elementary school. Um, you're at home with your young ones and serving at various local churches. And those have deepened your passions to see individuals walk in freedom and be able to bring their whole authentic self into every facet of their life, uh, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to racial identity. Uh, you and your husband, Mark, live in Guelph and are serving at a local church there. And you, as you say here, you can be found with a book in your hand, enjoying the glory that is chocolate. Totally Always. agree with you, 100%. <laughs> And laughing as you are with the people that you love. Yes. And that is exactly you. Your smile just radiates your warmth. So I'm really excited for this conversation today. So people will have an opportunity to get to know you. So awesome. all of that being said, maybe yes. you can fill in the gaps a little bit about you and your mm -hmm. family and currently what you're up to. <laughs> That's a big yeah. question. It's we can talk about that for a while. Big question. There's so many layers to that. Yeah. So I'm doing, I've done some stuff with See Here Love, done some speaking and podcasting around the space. And it's funny that I start with that because that's very much not my, that's, that's not who I am. So I think, um, yeah, as you said, like my parents were immigrants. Um, I was born and raised in Toronto. We moved to Guelph. And if you asked me, like, I don't know, 15 years ago, what my life would look like, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to have a condo downtown Toronto, like living the life, doing the things. Um, and yeah, we currently live in Guelph. Um, we have a very neurodivergent household. My, my oldest um, like had an autistic burnout last year and just drastically changed our lives. I think the moment we had kids or the moment I got pregnant, I was like, oh, okay, this whole idea of one day life will go back to normal, whatever that looks like. Whatever um, normal is. <laughs> exactly. Whatever that is, is never really happening. And so it forever changed our existence. And um, honestly, like this year specifically, it's taught me a lot of what it looks like to slow down mm. and more intuitive and present existence. So right now what my life looks like, my husband pastors a church in Guelph. Um, a lot of my day to day is being present with our children. Um, whose nervous systems sometimes allow them to make it to school and sometimes that does not happen. Sometimes not? No, and it's really just figuring out the messiness of the in-between and mm -hmm. just learning what it like, looks like to live in the unexpected for me. Yeah, so yeah, my day-to-day -day right now is very, there's not one consistent. It's not here with, even Sandy, will be like, you, we've tried to schedule meetings multiple times and things have constantly... Have yeah it's there's... so hard it is it really is it's yeah yeah but there's a perseverance there and i knew we would do it yes so today was it was wonderful to know i'm like we actually did it we booked it we got the date today now. was our day and i don't know like when you talk about the seasons of motherhood i feel like that's part of just parenting right realizing yeah. we are going to do our best to show up and sometimes the unexpected happens yeah. with our little people yeah. It's not so little people. Mm -hmm. I think that's just what we have to do in every season of our motherhood because yeah. the unexpected will happen. We almost have to anticipate it. And um, I was actually listening to a podcast that this woman was just talking about, I'm a routine person. And when mm. you bring children into the world, the routines are vastly different than from what they were prior to having children. And then every season of that child, baby, toddler, younger child, everything changes moment to moment. 
And like you've talked about with um, the autism in your family, that also has a factor into how your routine changes to, to bless your child and to meet the needs Absolutely. of your child. And then your needs, again, get put back a little bit further or your marriage gets put back, just put back just a little bit further too. That just happens. It is because you're, you are prioritizing, right? You can't have all your burners on at the exact same, like no. on high at the same time. And no. I was literally, I was just having this conversation with a girlfriend where I'm like, I do feel like in this season, a lot of our rhythms and routines center around our children. Yeah. And I personally feel a lot of shame and guilt about that. Cause yeah. I'm like, oh, they're older now. They're six and they're eight older in quotation marks. But this idea of, you know, there should you remember before we were parents and everyone's like, I'm not going to build a life that solely respo like revolves around my children. I'm not going to be that person. Guess what? I'm that person. And I have learned to be like, hey, that is okay in this season because that is actually what their bodies need yes. and figuring out how to be healthy for yourself and for your marriage right. and that too. Yeah. And I think the community that you have at your church and the different women that we have connected with just because of Melinda yeah, yeah. <laughs> become that place where you do have needs met in ways that only God can orchestrate so mm -hmm. that you are filling the needs that you have because God knows what you need. Yeah. He knows you're tired. He knows you're, you're having moments where you're desperate for connection with other friends and mm -hmm. God does bring those opportunities around. It just may not be every day. But I am so grateful for my community, absolutely. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Absolutely. Well, let's look a little bit about um, kind of your faith journey and okay. um, talk about, like I know you've talked about being this first generation, that, mm -hmm. um, being here and raising your family, but when did faith come into the picture for you? Oh, so honestly, and like I was born into, a, like my, my dad was pastoring. Um, and so it was it was just in the water. In some ways, mm -hmm. I didn't know anything different. Um, it's a good it was, way to put it. yeah, it was, it was, it was my experience. And so, there's a there's a really beautiful part to that, and there's a part I had to reconcile with as I got older right. and make it my own. And so, I think like really, it's been an evolution. There's been lots of pivotal moments. Whether I was in high school, I was like, okay, what does this actually look like for my life today? Um, I got to university, and I really had to like understand. Okay, so where? Like, how does this all intersect? Because when you're, in some ways, for me, when it was in the water, so to say, um, I created really childlike ways of thinking because that's yeah. how I understood it, right? It was like, hey, like, so everything is very black and white and very dogmatic. And as you get older, you realize the nuance in that. And mm -hmm. I had to, to reconcile that. Um, and honestly, like this last season, the last few years, I think have been the most groundbreaking for me in terms of my faith journey and that's yeah. funny to say right like okay so i'm 35 i've grown up in like a pastor's house married a pastor said i would never marry a pastor married a pastor <laughs> i've heard that um, before <laughs> always right always um and i really had to find jesus in the messiness of this season mm -hmm. um, and that's looked different in every, like that that looks different based on the experience in the season of your life so um i had hyperemesis with both our kids but especially with our second i was like on an iv in a dark room for months like just a disaster or felt like a disaster mm -hmm. and it was one of the first experiences in my life where holy spirit just showed up in a radical way wow. whether it was a tangible like people who just showed up and spoke words of life over me or like visions and dreams and seeing like just actually seeing Holy yeah. Spirit move and feeling Holy Spirit's presence. Um, it was one of the first times it became like God became tangible yeah. to me in my life. And then I think having children has really changed it too, right? Because now you have to figure out what does it look like to impart that faith to the next generation. Yes. Um, yeah. You start to really ask yourself those questions. How am I going to do it? How am mm -hmm. I going to do it well? because we're still on a journey, just Absolutely. like our kids are on a journey. Of course, it's very different because of our different ages and stages, but mm -hmm. we're still in the process of sanctif sanctification and we're still learning more about Christ. And, and how do we do that every day? It can be really hard to figure out how to do that. And it's interesting you talk about that season when your kids were six and eight, um, just recently about um, the gospel coming alive and just a new found faith sense. Mm -hmm. I found that too, when my kids were 
all five of them in that very young stage. I think my youngest was, I think I was actually pregnant with my fifth. And mm. we moved to a new church. And I was actually just sharing this the other day, funny. And I really felt like the gospel came alive in our home in a brand new way and a fresh new way. And the spirit just filled my heart with this unbelievable desire to bring the gospel into our life in whatever way God wanted us to do. Not that Christ mm -hmm. was at the center of our home, yeah. but there was like this new zeal. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know how to describe it, except that it was exciting. And yeah. we loved where we were. It was hard change because we loved where we were before. But mm -hmm. it's like, you know that moment where God picks you up and he places <laughs> you somewhere and you're like, what are we doing? And yeah. now I can look back and go, okay, I can see why you did that. I can yeah. see why. Yeah, it's really cool to see like the providence and the redemption in all of it. The same, like I don't think, well, no, I don't, not that I don't think, I was not thrilled about our move. Um, I very much saw God's hand in it, um, but it was a hard move because it was a change of a place that we loved, a mm -hmm. place where we felt settled, a place where we had family and support systems, right. um, to a place where none of that was true. And I love when you talk about like, that was a season where, you know, it became like the spirit just prompted like that life in you. Cause I think there are different seasons where it looks different. Right. I think oh, growing sure. up, I remember carrying so much shame of, well, a couple months ago, my spiritual disciplines were all locked down and this is what it looked like. Right. And it's like, yeah. you know, there are seasons and it's in the same way that, you know, sometimes there's just a hunger for one thing mm -hmm. um, that can change. I can shift. I like after my second, I had like when I weaned her after I was breast done breastfeeding her, I had significant postpartum. And so my spiritual director and I were chatting and I'm like, I just, I don't know what it looks like moving forward. Like we figured mm -hmm. out the meds piece and all of that. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't even know, like I'm, I'm just angry. I'm angry at mm -hmm. God. I'm angry at all of it. And she's like, can you just focus on seeing Jesus, mm -hmm. seeing Holy Spirit, seeing love in your children, like in their smile? Right. Can you just see how, like, you know, your kids are made in the image of this divine creator? And it was such a transformative moment for me, as much as we all know that we're, you know, we're created in the image of God. And this is all like stuff that I'd grown up hearing just to be like, okay, the gospel is so real to me in my home and just being witness to the way my children live their life, learn to love themselves, love each other, love God. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely changed the way that I see God moving in the world. That's really neat. I really yeah. love that. Yeah, it's it's a, it's almost like the simplicity of the moment and the gratitude that we're, mm -hmm. we forget just to look yeah. at the simple things. And mm -hmm. I remember when you talk about that busy season um, with the kids and, and nursing and just little ones and that whole idea of, you know, you're getting up in the morning and you're doing your devotions and you're, doing your homework for the Bible study for the next week. And I have, I can tell you more times um, that I would go to the Bible study and I'm like, I barely made it. I'm sweating. Yeah. Yep. The kids are crying. I didn't get my Bible study done. I don't even know what page we're on, yeah. but it was those moments where everybody just surrounded you and said, it's okay. Yeah. There for you. And it became a place of refuge and community to just go, I'm drowning, I'm tired, I just need a coffee, and I need to talk to you, and I need people to pray over me. I can't tell you how many times that happened for me so beautifully in my life. So mm -hmm. just struck me when you said that with the young kids trying to be in that moment, right? Which I love that, like that picture so much, because to me, that's the church, that's authenticity. That's when yes. people can show up completely as themselves. And so one of like the conversations mm -hmm. we keep having in our home is how do we make space for people to show up authentically, mm -hmm. right? Especially in an autistic home where I feel like there's lots of masking that happens. And so my kids come home and they're not masking anymore mm -hmm. and things look messy, right? Or to the, to the outside world. And so what does it look like for people to show up safely and as themselves? And yeah. when you say that, I'm like, shouldn't that be the church? I know in my own existence, I grew up in spaces where all of the theology I was reading was mm -hmm. written by people, but like, predominantly men who had awesome support systems. So their spiritual disciplines could look a certain way, could sit on mm -hmm. a rhythm because they weren't navigating and managing households or right. it was, it was, it was a different, like just different altered space. Right. Yeah. That was like their patriarchal space. And that's beautiful. And I've learned from their theology. However, moving forward, I realized I go into spaces 
with that same mindset where like, okay, I'm, I have a value for excellence. I need to have things in my nice neat box where I've done all my devotions at five o'clock or whatever the time, you know, whatever it is that we're on. Um, but actually it's the times when you can show up as yourself and it's a little messy oh, yeah. where I am actually the most authentic. I am showing up as my most God-given self. I'm in my yeah. own integrity. Um, you and I were talking about this at so the last See Here Love filming day was just a, like a gong show in our house. I had <laughs> sprained my foot. My husband was in meetings and it's just been like a wild week so he couldn't actually reschedule what he was doing. Um, so my dad, who was in Toronto, drove an hour to Guelph to pick me up, to drive me to Burlington to film for like 7 a.m. It was wild. Okay. And both kids were in wild sc school refusal. Their nervous systems were just like in freeze. And mm -hmm. so he drove back from Burlington, picked up my kids, and spent the day with my kids. And so wow. I'm sitting there filming this Bible study where I have tried to show up like excellently. I've done the research, right? I've done like, you know, the logical pieces, yes. but also very much aware this is not where my head is at. The week has looked far different than I thought it was going to be. I'm not showing up in what I used to think was my best self. Right. But it was in some ways the most authentic I've ever been. Mm. Um, I felt the most in my integrity and it was also the most fun I had yeah. because I just got to show up as me. I was like, okay, so I'm, there's the part, I know Holy Spirit's got my kids, you know, my dad and my husband and all the, you know, like, you know, we have a support system. They're doing mm -hmm. their thing. Um, and I just get to show up as myself. And even when you talk about your Bible study and like, that's when people just surround you and love you. And yeah. to me, that's like when the most honest conversations happen. Yeah. When we're not just showing up with our head knowledge, but actually what's, what's happening in our hearts. Yes. Yeah, exposing the mess, I think, yeah. is one of the most important things because everyone's messy. That's motherhood is messy, and the church is messy. And um, even when I was able to watch the filming um, that day, there was something going on, and it wasn't just by accident. It was a Holy Spirit divine mm. appointment because the relatability around the table when you were filming the Bible study, I felt like I was just right there beside all of you engaged with the conversation, learning as I was sitting there and just thanking mm -hmm. God for this moment. And I had heard a little bit from a couple of the ladies that it was a challenge for every single one of them to get there. Absolutely. But how that became a beautiful, raw place where you were just connected and you could tell. Um, mm -hmm. it, was, it was amazing. So I know that this Bible study is coming out um, for the unknown women of the Bible. And it's going to be great. I'm really hoping yeah. women will just engage with it. I'm really excited for it. But isn't that interesting? Even like just the rawness of we all had to show up in our mm -hmm. authentic selves. And like, don't get me wrong. I am all here for social media and all the things. But we very much live in a perfectionist culture, right? Mm -hmm. Like everything we do, we do. Is, like, has our filter on. Even our church services, like everything is done well and it's scripted and I'm not knocking the excellence and all of that like there's yeah. there's a beauty yes. and a time and a place for that but there is something for me about just the raw authenticity that I'm like I feel like Jesus just like you see Jesus in those moments yeah see Jesus in the mess because yeah. isn't life just really messy yeah you know considering this stage that you're in and the mm -hmm. challenges that you're experiencing um, with the different needs of your kids how would you kind of like just speak to a mom right now who's experiencing mm -hmm. whatever challenge it is with their child whether it's a physical need an emotional need and i know that you've been experiencing a lot of the the highs and lows and mountaintop experiences and valleys and so what does that look like in your family today and what could you say maybe to somebody who's kind of walking through that path right now what kind of encouragement could you maybe share with them today well, one oh my goodness it's hard and i see the hardness Mm. And I see the pain and the messiness and it's so nuanced because not everybody sees that. Right. And so it feels really lonely. Um, mm -hmm. So just, you're not alone in the mess. My life is very messy. Um, with that, as we were kind of just talking about Jesus living in the mess and showing up as your authentic self, I think trust yourself. Like you've mm. been created in the image of a divine creator and trust your body trust because if there's 
we just talked about like living in a perfectionist society where things need to be done well. And even in parenting, we very much have, okay, so at this developmental stage, this needs to line up. This is what right. healthy parenting looks like. This is what like gentle parenting looks like. This is what like um, healthy boundaries look like. These are all so important and beautiful. But when your children don't always fit into that norm or any child really, right. no one, no child fits into all, checks all these no. boxes. Um, we often were so quick to judge other parents. Oh, well, look at how much screen time they did. Oh, look at like this and that. And yeah. and I get it. I get where it all, it came from a good place. Mm -hmm. I think in the beginning, maybe kind of sort of. <laughs> um, yeah. But trust, like the intuition that God has put in you mm -hmm. because you know your child best. They're your child for a reason. You're their parent for a reason. And there is what you can offer them is only what you can offer them. And I also just genuinely believe what works for one family may not work for every family. Oh, 100%. And so I just, totally agree with right? that. Like yeah. just because you're reading all of these great professionals who are like, this is what works. It right. doesn't mean it's going to work for your kids. No. And I really, really believe like when we honor our children and who they're created to be, mm. they like they feel God's love because mm. they're you know, feeling us love them. They're feeling they know that their create their bodies are created mm, well because yeah. we're not constantly trying to change their bodies. We're not constantly trying to change their yeah. personalities. And I think one of the biggest things I've learned from this season is one to trust my body and what it's telling me, trust my intuition, and trust my kids' bodies. Trust that they're created as intelligent um, beings made in the image of God. Of God. And yeah. there's wi there's wisdom there. Absolutely. If they're saying they can't do something or they need to do something. There's probably wisdom there. Yeah. If so we very much yeah. create a space where it's very top down. And we were just like, we're, I remember when my, my daughter was struggling with sleep and my doctor was like, well, she's just being manipulative. <laughs> like, like, I'm not <laughs> saying you're not being manipulative. I'm not saying that we all are not, you know, figuring the world out, but why is she pushing her boundaries? What was underneath right. all that? What was happening? Let's get to the root, right? Yeah, like yeah. there was, there was so much curiosity that was needed. Oh, I love and, that word curiosity because yeah. You do have to be curious as a parent because that helps you to be the one who intentionally goes in and researches and finds and asks questions, not only to the professionals, but to the child themselves and really getting yeah. to the heart of the matter. Like, what is it that you need and how can I help you? And getting down to their level and just hearing them, you know, that's really, that's, really beautiful. It is. It's very collaborative. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, it's, it's, it's countercultural in so many ways. We're currently planning a family vacation. And I'm not even sure if this is going to happen because I don't know everyone is healthy enough to do it but one child has um put it out there that flying on a plane right now causes them anxiety mm. i'm not saying that we always listen to our anxiety i am also so like there's that line of like what do i push but there's also right. a line of you know what your body can handle and not handle you're still in right. burnout what and it just it feels so counter cultural and counterintuitive to my husband and i to be like okay so we're really like this is a collaborative process there are four voices Yes. Making this decision and how yeah. we're going to like spend this money and what's going to actually be life giving to mm -hmm. all four of our bodies. And it's, yeah, it just, it sounds, it, no, it it's, sounds, it's, it's so true. Cause there's so many layers because going away as a family, it's a big decision yeah. and you don't want to make the wrong choice. You want to be wise about it. And you want to listen to what God is saying to you and hear what your kids mm -hmm. are saying. Yeah. That's yeah. it's, it's a big yeah. deal. Yeah, absolutely. It plays out on all the different levels, right? Yeah. I love that word collaboration. Um, yeah. How would you say you and your husband have kind of collaborated on the parenting with your kids? Um, I know as a pastor, he will be very busy and his days will be, his time is precious. Um, as any husband knows when they're full-time busy. Um, but mm -hmm. how do you guys work together um, on this parenting? It's been a lot of trial and error. I will be honest. And there's been a lot of nights when we're like, we're just too exhausted. So mm. we're going to bed and just not talking to each other. Cause it's too, it's more painful to go through the day again. Yeah. Um, and that's just like, that's real life. A lot of it is like, we've just been fighting for it. Um, mm. And really our big question in our home is like, so what does love require of me? So what does it look like to mm. love like Jesus right now? And if it's not loving, um, then what are we doing? What are, like, what are we fighting for? So it's been helpful to have a value system that we can both go back on and like lean into. And so, so, you know, if someone's nervous system is stuck in fight, what are we doing about that? What does it look like to actually love 
them well right now. And I'm very, very grateful for our church community because our elders have given him so much space since last year to rework his work schedule, to yeah. be present um, in yeah. really to hard times. Mm -hmm. And so we have a great community in that sense. And he really has, like Mark is amazing, but it, it's, yeah, it's been hard. It's a lot of just like fighting for it and going back to, okay, what does love look right. like? And realizing that we can have all these great plans. And I'll be honest, like yesterday was just a really bad day. Wednesday was really great. Thursday was really bad. Yeah. And just being like, hey, it's just a day. And we're mm -hmm. just gonna, it's not gonna define the yeah. rest of this week. Um, yeah. 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 Well, it's also a season where you won't get the time back. And if you no. know that this is a time where your kids are just more specifically in a need of the, the presence of the fa father and the mother, just whatever that looks like in your family, mm -hmm. Yeah. It will fill that need at that time, and then God will kind of release as He needs to release for Him to be, you know, in the office a little bit more on a Monday as opposed to on a Thursday. You know, like the the mm -hmm. balance will come. But I think yeah. it's really neat to hear that you're willing to take that step and give back to your kids when they need you the most, because it's mm -hmm. not going to be like that forever. It's not. That's the reality, right? And and he, and Mark has like been really great about like he'll get up at five, work till you know the kids get up help me get the kids to school and then he, then he'll like we've been, had to be creative with it right. but at the same time i especially have seen so many children burned on the altar of ministry mm. and we were just like specifically because of his role like we're not we're not doing that no we're like they have to know that they come first yeah so yeah, yeah. that's a great place to be well before mm. we close our time which i still can't believe we're almost coming we're up to blue time. Time. it's crazy um and i know you've talked about a little bit of encouragement for a mom out there, but maybe there's a sense of, of a mom being overwhelmed and feeling like they're just too broken for God. And they feel like their marriage is broken and they feel broken and their kids are broken and the world is broken and they're just sensing this overwhelm in their life. What kind of encouragement could you share with her today? Because I know and we both understand that sense of overwhelm and mm -hmm it's easy to get caught up in a spiral and mm -hmm. what what could we say or what could you say to someone today that was watching that needs to hear just a little nugget of encouragement one i just absolutely get it and parenting is by far the hardest thing mm -hmm. i have done in my life it has changed our marriage it has changed mm -hmm. me it has triggered me in ways that I would never have imagined. Like the reparenting journey is so real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but in the overwhelm, like really practically, like, are you be, like, do you have a friend that you're able to be honest with? It came to a point yeah. last spring where I had to show up at a girlfriend's house at like 1030 at night, be like, hey, I actually have to tell you how bad things are. Right. Just because I need someone to know. I need a witness yes. Yes. Um, for my pain. Mm -hmm. um, also like just like really simple like are you like when i'm in real deep overwhelm there's just like yelling at holy spirit whether it's counting five things i'm thankful for five things my body can see here touch and right. feel like really just grounding myself in the moment and just also knowing it's not as like this is very much a season mm -hmm. it is a very hard season you are not alone in it like all of these beautiful glamorized pictures of parenting are not the complete truth no. um and I will be honest, there have been many moments when I've wanted to throw in the towel and I'm very yes. grateful that I am still here. Yes. <laughs> um, and I really like, I can say to you, like lean into prayer, God's got you. Right. Like, and absolutely all of those things are true, mm -hmm. but like reach out to somebody because right. there's like being alone in the journey is so isolating and terrifying. Right. And so just to be able to be honest with someone that like, it is really, really yeah. hard. Yeah. You're not alone. And I promise you this part is just a season. There may be another hard part. Yes. But this part, yes. this hard is a season. Yeah. Yeah. I think you need to have that person that hears the hard, the ugly, the mess, yeah. and just it doesn't even need to say anything. They just no. need to hear it and be present. I think that that is really missing because we just get so busy and then we are fearful of what people will think that I'm not doing a good enough job or this is my fault or whatever it may be. So I love your words of encouragement mm -hmm. because it is important that we take our brokenness, yes, to the Lord first, yes, 
and to other people and to be in a safe place. And it sounds like that's what you have at your church and with your husband. And that's just a wonderful gift that you have um, to be able to meet yourself, meet other people and be broken yourself, but know that it's okay. And that's wonderful. It really is. It's okay to not be okay. It's cliche yes. for a reason, right? And yeah, yeah we're, we're created for community, I think. Yeah. In so many ways, so. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much for just this time. I know it's a short window and it seems to go by so quickly. We could probably talk for a very long time, but uh, maybe we can catch up with you later and see where you are on your journey in the next little while. But thanks for this time and for sharing some encouragement with others. I know that so many women will be blessed by it. So thank you so much, Trekvina, for being with us today. Thanks so much for having me, Sandy. I really just enjoyed hanging out. Anytime. I loved it. Anytime. Have a great day. You too.